Hey, what's up, folks? Um, so here's a, uh, we were actually talking about this this morning in Black One, and I was like, oh, I should have a slide for this. Well, I'm, I do have a slide for this. Here it is. So the multiple normal forces thing isn't the most important thing in the world, but what is important is that we introduce this idea of, um, or, or we formalize this idea of what we call force pairs, all right? Um, and so when we, when we deal with systems of multiple masses like this, it's important, you know, a couple things are important. One is that we can um, look at free body diagrams for parts of the system, right, like this and this, or the system as a whole like that, all right? And once we do that, it's also important for us to be able to identify what we, um, what we introduced today, these things called force pairs. Okay, so we're going to do a free body diagram for M2 here. All right, here's M2. Well, what forces act on it? Um, we have, let's see, M2G, and what I'll call a normal force. Now, I'm going to call it the normal force that one exerts on two, or a normal force between object one and object two. Okay. Well, that's what we have. For object one. Well, there's that. We have M1G. And we have, let's see, a normal force. Now, this is the normal force. Remember, I know we did this in block one. Hopefully, I'll remember to do it later in block four. But when we talk about forces now, it's great for us to be able to talk about this is a force that the blank exerts on the blank, right? Like for this one, this is a force that the earth exerts on M1, right? Well, this is a normal force. So I should say this. This is really a gravitational force that the earth exerts on mass 1. This is a normal force that the earth exerts on M1, okay? Now, notice. And over here, we have this normal force that mass 1 exerts on mass 2. Well, for that reason, we must also have a normal force that mass 2 exerts on mass 1. And again, this is what we call a force pair. These are always equal and opposite. Now, isn't, isn't this N21 here just really the weight of that object? Sure it is. So says the idea here that net force in the y direction on this thing is zero. Yes, N21 or N12 does equal M2G, but, you know, for the idea of the force pair, it's nice for us to be able to write them, you know, as normal forces. Okay, and then for the system, uh, the, whole, the whole thing... Um, I'll do it like this, M1 plus M2, uh, and I'm going to write it, because we know what the masses are, a 5 and a 10, I'll write it as M15, be okay with that, um, and I'm going to, you know what, while I'm at it, let me adjust over here, I would typically call this M2 is 5, I'm going to call that M5G, and here, I'll call this, and I, I'll call this M10 my notation con consistent. And then, well, here's another normal exerted by the Earth, all right? Not the same normal as that one, right? This normal is equal to M10G. This normal is equal to M15G, okay? So again, being able to identify forces that act on um, the system as a whole and or parts of the system is, is real important for us, um, especially in a super tough question like this one. This is an awesome question, all right? Um, it's a penguin on a sled, right? And the idea here, the question is, you know, there's friction between the penguin and the sled. If there wasn't, well, when we pull the sled this way, inertia says penguin wants to stay where a penguin is because he's not in motion. So if we pull the sled out, well, the penguin wants to just sit here. The only reason the penguin doesn't 
just sit there and we pull the sled is because of a frictional force that acts on the sled. Sorry, that acts between the sled and the penguin. So the question is, what's the maximum force F we can pull with such that um, that that uh, what do you call them there? That penguin doesn't slip. Okay. Well, great place to start is let's look at. Um, I'm going to call the. Well, let's just do this. We'll call this mass penguin, and we'll call this mass sled. So if I do the mass of the sled, well, what forces do I have acting on it? Well, let's see. We've got mass sled G, right? We have normal exerted by the Earth. If we do mass penguin, Oh, I'm sorry. And we also, of course, have this, right? We have F. And let me see also, um, the penguin coefficient between sled and snow, so that means we do have F, F, um, let's call that earth and sled. ES, not that, earth and sled. Okay. Um, let's look at penguin. Well, penguin has mass penguin G and normal between sled and penguin, or that sled exerts on penguin, right? And here's the tricky one. And a frictional force this way between sled and penguin. Okay, again, if that frictional force wasn't there, when the sled got pulled this way, there'd be nothing that makes the penguin also accelerate this way, right? That friction force is what's responsible for the penguin's acceleration. Now notice, there's a couple of things here. Uh, yeah, there's a couple of things here that we have to make, we, we have to um, also account for back with the sled. And one of them is here, right? If the sled exerts a normal force on the penguin, then the penguin exerts an equal and opposite and penguin sled force on the sled. Let's say that again. If the sled exerts a normal force on the penguin, the penguin has to exert an equal and opposite force on the sled. Also this, look at this. If the, um, if the sled exerts a frictional force on the penguin, well, the penguin has to exert an equal and opposite frictional force on the sled. We have to draw it like this, F, F, penguin on sled. Okay, so two force pairs there, those normal forces and those friction forces. Well, the system one is the easier one, right? If we look at system, um, I'm going to do system up here. Hmm, how do I do that? System. Well, we have M system G. We have normal earth. And this force F does act on the system. Yes, it acts on the force. Sorry. Yes, it acts on the sled, but the sled's part of the system. So therefore, the force acts on the system. Okay, let's see. We know the sled's weight. We know the penguin's weight. Blah, 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 blah. Find the maximum force that can be exerted on the sled before the penguin starts to slip off. Okay. Well. Where do we start? Um, I'm going to pause. Okay, so um, we want the maximum horizontal force. Well, what I usually start with um, is the simplest place I can. All right, where do we see that maximum force F? Well, we see it here. And we see it here, right? This is a mess, right? Tons of forces there, um, you know, three of them in the horizontal direction. 
So, and, and I, I'm not, I don't know any of them yet. This one only has, you know, one force in the horizontal direction. It is the force we want. So I'm going to write that as F equals M system A. Right? Well, we do know this. We don't know what the acceleration is, so there's no way to find F from there. So the question is, how do we find the acceleration? Well, again, you can go here, which to me looks like a mess, or we can go here. Right? I'm going to go here because it's simpler. So if I do this one, I'm going to say that the force of friction between sled and penguin is mass of the penguin, this should be a P in here, times A. And again, these A's are the same acceleration. Each part of the system accelerates at the same rate. Uh, well, do we know the force of friction between sled and penguin? Well, they don't tell it to us, but they do tell us, notice, the coefficient of static friction, right? Remember, we don't want the penguin to slip. So that's why we need a static coefficient here. So that means I'm going to turn this into mu m penguin g. Let me back that up. This is really mu normal force. Well, what normal force is it? It's the normal force between sled and penguin. If it's a force of, force of friction between sled and penguin, it's the normal force between sled and penguin. Well, according to this, our free body diagram here, normal between sled and penguin is equal to m penguin g. So that's mu m penguin g equals m penguin a. Well, looky there. Actually, doesn't matter what the mass of the penguin is. The acceleration is mu times g. So that's the maximum acceleration that the system can have before the penguin starts to slip. Any acceleration less than that, the penguin will, won't slip. Any acceleration more than that, the penguin will start to slip and appear to slide backwards, you know, across the sled, in the frame of the sled's motion, in the frame of reference of the, sled, the sled's motion, the penguin would slide backwards. All right, but at this maximum acceleration A, which we'll just write as, if we call G10, we'll call this 7 meters per second squared. Again, we're just calling G10, and mu is 0.7. Um, we get that, uh, we get that acceleration. All right. Uh, now, you know what I missed here is I missed this one. I did miss this. There is a frictional force between earth and sled that acts on the system. So this actually has to turn into F minus frictional force between earth and sled equals M system A. Now our A still applies. We still we still use this same A. Alright? What I what I missed was that there's a coefficient of kinetic friction between sled and snow. So this F is going to be M system A plus the force of friction between earth and snow. Or F is M system A plus mu times normal between earth and snow. I should have this in different colors. Or this is F equals M system A plus mu M system G. Well, we could finally substitute. So this is, I'll do it in a different color now. Let's see, that's M. Uh, I'm gonna, again, if I call G10, Mass of the sled is 6, 
mass of the penguin is 7, so I'm going to call this M13. Now times A, uh, I'll call that, well, how about I just do this? Mass of the system is 13 times 7 plus, this is mu between sled and snow, 0 0.10 times 13 kilograms times 10. So this is, let's see, 13 times 7 plus 13. So it's really 13 times 8, which is, I think, 104. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. 8 and 24. Yeah, 104 newtons, I believe, is my answer. What do you think? That's a doozy, huh? Um, so, yeah, what else here? Again, we're using this idea of looking at forces that act on individual parts of the system. Whoops. And the system as a whole. And especially this idea of force pairs, like this normal force and this normal force and this friction force and this friction force. Those are what we call force pairs. Um, and... Yeah, I think, um, you know, especially when we do things like this, right, when we look at this normal force, right, if it's a normal force between sled and penguin, um, or sorry, if it's really, if it's a frictional force between sled and penguin, we need normal force between sled and penguin. So we're really starting to tie a lot of, uh, a lot of ideas together, all right, um, multiple masses, you know, being sure that we know which normal force to deal with when we deal with a frictional force, force pairs. So lots of ideas here, lots of great physics. Um, we'll have a, a, a few of these problems to work through tomorrow. Um, Shanks calls these bookulator problems because the um, he would talk about like a book with a calculator on top of it. So it's a bookulator, right? And the question is, you know, how we can even do them like this. How hard could I pull the book? So it's going to keep the, sorry, how hard could I pull on the calculator so that the book would slide along with it? We can do that problem too. There's probably one of those in the sheet that I'll give you tomorrow. All right, this is a doozy, folks. Believe me, I understand. I hope that there are questions on this stuff tomorrow because um, it is not simple. So, um, yeah, that's all, folks. But do, uh, do be fully prepared, my friends. You heard it here. No lie. We are equipped. We have the technology. We can and will play inertia ball tomorrow. It's going to be awesome. Um, wear your athletic clothes. Bring your competitive spirit. And, um, and uh, be ready. Be ready. It's a race against the clock. For the love of the game. All right, later.